Welcome back to State and Local. I'm Anne-Marie Battistone, and you're watching Norfolk Public Access. My guest today is my second interview with a candidate, is Scott Bugby, who is an incumbent running for his second term as selectman in Norfolk. Oh, thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you for having me. I oh, appreciate not at doing all. this every year oh. for all of us. <laughs> By the way, it's, I'm running for my third term. Oh, so third. I'm, oh, yes, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm going to complete my second term this election. Oh, oh, So this okay. will be my third term. I've already put almost six years in, oh. going for nine. If I'm you know, chosen by the voters. You know, I was, th I was thinking before I came over here that it was kind of, I didn't want to say anything, but we had talked about this earlier, there's kind of a thankless job. Yeah. I mean, you, there's no honorarium. Nope. There's, and there's the pay a lot of very, responsibility. The pay, almost, the pay is less than zero. <laughs> it, no, it's, 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 it, it is, it is. It's thankless, but it's really not. I mean, it's you know you have to sometimes arbitrate, you know, neighbor versus neighbor or dog hearings, and you know where you're either going to make no one happy or everyone. You know, it's it's almost impossible all the time to make everyone happy. Right. Right. You know, um, but at the same time, you get involved in great projects. You know, trying to bring the police and fire station to fruition, help. You know, looking oh, for school right. expansion, and you know, funding roads. You know, you know, getting prison mitigation money thanks to our you know work of Sean and Richard to make sure we get our money that we deserve, and applying that to the road. So there's, you know, I, I wouldn't stick around for six years and hope for three more if I didn't right. feel satisfied. And, you know, it's giving back to the community. But it is like people laugh, like, why do you do it? My friends all say, well, you know, you're crazy to do that. You know, don't you have other things to do? And, you know, I'm an empty nester now, so it's, it's, not, it's not an issue with, you know, taking away from time for my kids or anything oh, like that. Are your children and, wait? And have they co finished college? Yeah, uh, no, my daughter's in her last semester at University of Maryland. We'll graduate in May, so I'll be down there in oh. May. And my son's in his se second year of law school at Suffolk. Really? Yeah, so I'm not done yet. So. You know, Maryland, when I was, I grew up in the Was in Washington, D.C., and in those days, Maryland was just like a safety school. Oh, yeah. But not anymore. No, Emily, it's very difficult oh, to get into. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think she's the second person. Uh, the most famous person at, at, is at Maryland, or graduate from Maryland, is Jake Lehman, our superstar basketball player from KP. He was there while Emily was there. And she, you know, she was applied for the biology program. So it's a very oh, she's a in biology. So she switched over to animal oh. science because she wants to be a zookeeper. So anyone who knows about zookeeping really? jobs, please contact me. I'd love to talk to you about it. Well, she could probably go into uh, the, into being a tech. I mean, she probably doesn't. Want, I mean, that she would be a lesser yeah. job. But of course, but I mean, if worse came to worse, she would she'd be able to go right into us being a tech. Yeah, and you a, know, she's she's thought about that. She's a, a doctor. You know, she doesn't. You know, she really loves working with animals. She's an oh. animal lover. She's interned at the Roger Williams Zoo in Providence. She interned at the Buttonwood Zoo in New Bedford. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And she worked at the Museum of Science in their little zoo. So she wants to do that, and so we're happy for her. So uh, we'll hope it works out. Well, you know, I admire these kids that go into, into hard science because there are all these, I think, I mean, I think kind of semi-bogus majors now that they have <laughs> that, you know, are kind of wishy-washy. I mean, it's, but, you know, hard science is, it's you know. Science. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think the liberal arts or the other majors, it also gives, you know, what, college does is prepare you for the next stage in life, whether it's, you know, how you, you know, just like in anything, for your job or how you commit your time, how you, how you structure your time, right? So whether it's philosophy major, or English major, or history major, electrical engineering, it's, it's all preparation, right? I mean, I think, you know, it's like, it seems easier if you're in hard science or a business or an engineering that your career path is kind of set there. I think it's more challenging sometimes for these kids that come out with, you know, a degree in philosophy. Lots of them go on to law school. Lots of them yeah. go on to teach or get a teaching degrees. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a lot of work and very now, expensive. Now, did you major in business? I was, yes. I was a business you administration. You Bentley? With, uh, no, University of Vermont. Oh, and okay. so I, I got my degree in finance. So I've been around numbers my Are whole Are you life. from Vermont? No, I, I grew up in Holliston, Mass. So I've lived oh, my whole life in Massachusetts. That's a nice town. Yeah, it's not, it's, it was not, you know, we moved there in, when I was five years old. My parents just recently, well, four years ago, moved out to Spencer, a little farther out west. But yeah, it's a great town. So yeah. do, do you feel that that's what, was that what drew you to being on the, on the Board of Selectmen? Do you feel you had some contribution to make regarding finance? That, that was one of it, but it was more about just the, you know, the, we get to see the big picture and just to help in many different ways or get involved in many different things, whether it's, you know, trying to work with the Southwood and the Archdiocese to try to bring a great project to, to fruition, you know, that fits for the town, that the town wants. Uh, the, the numbers background doesn't help because of the budget, but it's funny, I mean, because people, I've seen a lot of comments on Facebook, you know, about the budget and, you know, and taxes and stuff like that. I mean, the budget starts off with each year, you know, the, our town accountant or finance director, Todd, Todd Lindmark, goes to all the department heads and says, Amory, what's your wish list? What, do you, what would you like for the cultural center, for the library? It starts with that. And he, he whittles that down. You know, he doesn't, you know, he looks at what, what they had last year, what they have this year, what we have for new growth and spending, and tightens that up, goes back and forth. And then it goes to Jack Hathaway, our town administrator. He goes through the budget, and he started as our finance director. 
And then after that, it goes to the advisory board. So there's really, you know, there's three bites of the apple when it comes to budget. And by the way, people ask, it's, it's, those meetings are all open and televised, so anyone can go, like when the Chief Stone would present his budget to the advisory board, I'm sure folks at home watch it on TV, see what he's asking for, Chief Bushnell and his budget. You have Matt Hafner with the facilities budget, and. Bob McGee will be in there, and that, that we have an extra, you know, for the town, that's why we have advisory boards or finance committees that they call them in Plainville. They're there to, you know, help out, the, make sure the citizens are being, you know, that their budget is being spent wisely. I mean, there's a lot of, again, I see a lot of comments, negative and positive about, you know, we, we have the highest tax, taxes around, our tax rate is, is through the roof, and it's awful. Well, you know, you somebody know. said to me the other day that it was, it was the highest in the state, it's number no. 63. Yeah, guess what, guess my hometown, Holliston, is, is uh, almost, I think, 19,000. 19, I think it's Wayland is number yeah. one. It could be, but what people- But there are I mean, a lot of towns, though, 63 is, is up there. There's oh yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's, that's a hot button, right? And people, you know, the, the, the tax rate number, you know, the 1853, or whatever the number is set, obviously it's not, it's set by the assessor, we approve it. What people have to keep in mind is it's that number then goes back, is, is used on your assessed value of the home, both residential, commercial, industrial. So we're looking at a time back, you know, we peaked in terms of assessed value for all the property in Norfolk, including my house, your house, all the businesses that were here in 08, was the highest it's ever been, and we still have not recovered to that point. Now when was that? That was in 2008. The, the, oh, it's come down? Oh, the, 2008 was the, the oh yeah, we're, we're oh. inching our way back up. The valuation of all, my, my house was worth a lot more than it is today in 2008. So what people keep in mind is, you know, you have a rate times the value of a house, right. that determines your taxes. Right. Right, so I mean, they say, okay, you know, I can go to, I can go to Medfield, it's $14 per thousand. Well, you know, my house and your house in Norfolk is worth, say, 300. In Medfield, it's probably worth 400. Oh, absolutely. So I, don't, I, wouldn't, I would argue that people in Medfield aren't paying less t taxes than you and I as citizens. No matter, you know, you have to look at it apples to apples. Okay, what is my four bedroom colonial, what is it worth in Medfield? Okay, my house is assessed, say, at 414. It would probably be assessed at 514. Oh, definitely. So my taxes would be pretty close. Another, huh. you know, another issue people, you know, think, it's interesting. yeah, people think. But is our, our rate higher than Medfield? Oh yeah, it, okay. it, it, well, all the tri towns, we're, we definitely are one of the highest. Is that it, right? it, yeah. But again, how think, does such a thing? <laughs> well, it happens. <laughs> you know, it happens because we're a bedroom community that is kind of bursting at the seams a little they bit. They had more business, right? Not, you know, again, we tell people at a tax rate hearing, and again, it, it doesn't make you feel any better and it doesn't lower your taxes. But we're ninety four percent residential, so the, the tax burden. Is, is borne by 90, 94% of all our spending is borne by us, me and you, and the rest of our, you know, rest of our citizens out there. You know, I, I mean, would, would it be, we, we'd be a lot better off if we had the Brenda Mellons. Not necessarily better off, we'd have traffic, we'd have issues with police and robbery, you know what I mean? So you have to be careful what you wish for, but 94% of our money comes from taxing residents, homes, boats, cars, versus you have towns like Medfield, you have towns like Plainville, Ransom. And then, you know, even if we were, you know, the funny thing is, even if we were to build out the rest of the commercial property, you know, look across the street, it's empty, take Southwood off the table for a moment, because that's just such a big thing, but even when we went in, if all the commercial that's available to be built is built, it's still not going to really affect us that much. We're still going to derive more tax revenue from resident, new residential homes, you know, at the Boyd's Crossing, at Abbeville, if it comes to fruition, all in, in just new development. You know, you think about a $600,000 house is going to generate, you know, seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000 in taxes. You know, a mom and pop shop and business might be you know, might only generate five thousand, even though it's commercial. Right, and that's what people want. Is There's, the rate the same? The rate is the same. See, that's where that's where the that where we could really affect change. But the and commercial help people. rate was different. No, you, ha you can have split rates. We've never we've, we always every year we have to debate that and at a, at a, at a, we call it the tax rate hearing, and we've never changed that. And the main reason is again because the limited commercial industrial development we have in town at six percent. You know, we're, you know, it used to be everyone used to say, "Oh, we're the no in Norfolk. No one, want, no, 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 no commercial guy wants to come." Do I, so, do we? Do you want us to drive those potential businesses away with a split rate? It's a lot easier to apply and rent them when you can split rate. You know, fourteen per thousand for you and I in the house and rent them. Seventeen per thousand for for the for the rent them outlets. They can afford. You know, they have so oh, much. Oh, they've got that. And, 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 oh, and wow, that's right. That. So, say we even do a split rate, and I, I, I and, and we decide to, ta you know, we do it what they call one, you know, one hundred twenty-five percent, meaning we, you know, they're yes. to twenty-five percent higher. It's, it's going to make a marginal difference, and all we're going to do is potentially hurt development. We don't have a big enough commercial base, and that's the problem. So when you, that's why people get say, oh, you know, split rates. Split rate would be the answer if we had 22 percent, you know, non non residential. You know, we have six. We can, right. you, know, you know what I mean? So that's so it's clear that for people. I know they're not going to like that answer. They're not going to be happy. But it's you know, yes, split rates. Help, that's where you get your benefit is the but, split rate on taxes. You know, it always seemed to me that uh, that 
I mean, I've lived here, what, I guess it's 23 years now. It always seemed to me that, that there was an awful lot of hassle that people went through here when they wanted to open a business, apart from the, you know, the tax rate, you know, apart from how convenient it yep. is to be in Norfolk. And I know, um, I know when Scylla opened up, yep. she had a lot of, I mean, that wasn't she you. She called me, no, she called, I tried she, to help, yeah. She had a lot of, I mean, can't that be mitigated it's, somehow? It's trying to be, you know, you can try to, you know, we have, ex, you, you, can, you, can, you can implement expedited, expedited, expedited permitting process. I think Celia had a tough start because she first wanted to be closer yeah. to the train yep. and tried to do a Mr. Pacini's building, right. which is a bad, you know, it's poorly run, you know. I shouldn't pick on the, 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 it needs upgrades. It had issues, and so she got strung along. I think there was some, you know, again, so that put her behind schedule a little bit and behind budget probably. So when she came over the new location, again, you have to meet certain standards, but, you know, they, they pick on the building department and our inspector, but we are, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's about public safety, being up to code, and making sure, you know, God forbid, you know, it wasn't done right or it wasn't inspected properly and there was a fire or some issue in there or the floors wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't ADA compliant or something like that. So I think the no from Norfolk is gone. It's still, you know, we still have, you know, zoning and bylaws that need to be, you know, looked at and reviewed to make it even better and more attractive. Right? So is an old building like the hardware store grandfathered in because their floor is certainly not even in yeah, there. Yeah, I think, yeah, you have a lot of what they call pre-existing and then have grandfathered. So if you were to... Or the step in, or that big steep step oh, yeah. at the, yeah. at the, um, at the saloon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And see, that's now, they why, did put a ramp in. Right. But, but that's why a lot of times, you know, again, good or bad, why, you know, because costly, why you don't see uh, building owners do necessarily major improvements sometimes, because once you open that can of worms, if you will, you, the, and I think they should be ADA compliant, but it's an expense. So what happens is, okay, I say, I'm, I'll put an elevator in this building. Well, I've seen some poor people when I worked upstairs trying to make it up, you know, trying to get up to their dentist. It's hard. If you have a back problem, a leg problem, yes. there's no elevator. So be, even though it's one floor, it'd be nice, it should have an elevator. But if the, you know, the, the guy, the nice guy, uh, I like them a lot, who, if he put in an elevator, you know what happens? He spends a lot of money. Where does that cost go? Your rent goes up, right? The rent goes up for here. Right. So right. it's not, nothing comes free. Right. Uh, but again, so that's why a lot of old things, you know, a grandfather, and you don't see a lot of change sometimes in buildings and improvements, really. You know, minor cosmetic, the ones that wouldn't require you to go ADA, you know, ADA compliant or bring it up to current code. I mean, it's, it's always inspected for safety and those kind of codes, but you're right. They might not have a ramp. They might not have this. So, you know, a second floor building should have an elevator. Mm -hmm. Just for today's, just, you know, it just needs to. Well, they're expensive to put in. Oh, they're that, they're, oh we, we looked at that at any building, like anything. a couple hundred school. thousand? Exactly. Again, sound, it doesn't seem like it should be, but it adds so well, much maybe. to like a new school, everything. Right. Everyone's like, oh, but why do we, you know, we spend 300000 of it? That's the best you're going to do. And you have to. There's, there's kids that need that and, and teachers that need that. Now, do you, do you foresee, or has this come up, Having to expand uh, Kennedy. Yeah, there's already we already we already put in money. I think in uh, this up. Oh, I you think, have uh, for a feasibility study because it was built with the, that section out in the Those front. Wings? It was always yeah, it was always built to add, be able to add another wing. And we work very. Dr. Lardy's great, and the and, the, and the, sc the school folks and the facility folks here in Norfolk are great. They've already pre-anticipated that they could do some shuffling with really, like grades K through what two I think is at HOD, and then three through six. So there's some way they you know they're they're creative about how they can do the grade. You know, some grades swell right. We have these big kids. Kindergarten yes. classes, then they become a big second grade. Right. Class. So they're looking at that now, but we are also going out to study adding, you know, that adding that wing you talked about. So there was room left there, and you know the problem with the state too, because funding they wouldn't let us build. You know, they only let you build what you currently need. Right. Which to me, given you know, you get, I wish to, again this is all goes back to the state, right? I wish they had allowed some forward thinking. You know, they got burned by a school. I think it was Newton that built this like Taj Mahal of schools, right? Yes, yes, yeah? yes, yes. And so that comes back to haunt the rest of us. It's almost like all right. You know, Anne-Marie ruined it for all of us because she took advantage of something. Now everybody's punished um, because, they, you know, they give you modest growth, I think. But, you know, again, look at what we have, all these projects coming on. And just, you know, Norfolk's a great place to live. So people come here in small developments, big developments, you know. So they didn't let us plan in a sense think about that. You know, they don't let you, they don't let you build, you know, okay, let's build 10 extra costs. No, because the state is funding half of it. So I, I get it. They're looking out for everybody in Massachusetts because of what happened with one project probably. Right. So yeah, the, the school, you know, our schools are growing. So it's what, what are they anticipating putting on? Now, who, who would be who would that come under the planning board? Well, I would always have to go to go to the planning board. Remember, just like when we built a new school, we usually get we usually get volunteers from all different boards. You know, a planning board For, volunteer, like a, commission. Uh, a building commission would be on that. They'd be ex officio, maybe not voting. Remember, like we had a building, you know, school new school building committee. Yeah. Just like we had a police uh, public safety building school committee with George Cronin sits on it. Jim Lehan represents the board. Probably John Welton from planning board. So there's always a representative, and then you have citizens involvement as well. 
So the, and you know, and be, they, they will do that. So there'll be no one board. It's it's a collaborative effort. Do, do you do you know how many more uh, spots they would be creating? With I don't know. I forgot. I don't know what if the plan's been fully vetted out. If they decided, you know, how many how many classrooms they anticipate needing. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. You, know. you know, tell me something. At what point with this 40B situation is the is the town able to say we we don't have the water, we don't have the schools, we don't have this, we don't have that? I mean. Is, is, does that That's never the, come to no, bear? It, well, the, the easiest one to come to bear would be, you know, you can always hinge on either environmental issues, conservation issues, public safety issues, and water. They almost tell us, you know, they almost turn a blind eye to schools because they almost say, Amory, that's not my problem. You have to go either, you know, go out for, a, you know, a, a building exclusion. You know, it, you know, it's your problem. You fix it, which is, as Sean and everyone knows, it, there's all kinds of groundswell to address this 40B issue because it, it can't just be a few things that the town has the right to say, you listen, you know, you're forced, not that we don't want our schools to grow and more folks to live in town, but you know, we're not ready to do this immediately. We can't have an influx of 600 yeah, students, yeah, yeah. which cost me <clears throat> now to go out and have to spend $30 million Six for a new projects. wings. Yeah, and so, but they look at, you know, and they do allow for water, like if we can't, because water is a public safety hazard. If I can't get water, you can't survive. So if we don't have fire. adequate water and fire, and th that's why public safety always gets to weigh in on it. So those, those, those concerns are listened to by the ZBA, and then if the ZBA puts conditions on that build, you know that that project, they usually up, they would normally be upheld by Mass Housing if they if the applicant said, you know what, I think what you're telling me to do, meaning you know build an access road or build this, is is too much. They could appeal, and they'll go in front of the, the housing you know housing uh, DCH Department of Housing, and the ho housing will look at that and they'll say, you know what, Mr. Developer, you know public safety trumps it. We agree with the, uh, the, Z uh, the ZBA's recommendation. You need to have three access points. Sorry. You know, I mean, they might not agree with everything. Like you said, that's why when people say, you know, just deny the project, right? The ZBA has a right to deny a project, again, but they're open for, then they're open for, you know, discussion, debate, and then appeal at the housing level. And I think I hear everyone's always talking about, you know, our, our housing, they have a 96% approval rate, meaning favor, favoring with the developer. So what that means is if, if it was denied the developer goes there, he now, we've lost all the leverage that we might have, the minimum, you know what I mean? He says, you know what, you know, because remember Abbeville came say with 300 units. By working and hearing the concerns and complaints and issues that people have, the project was scaled up. No, it didn't go away. 10 minutes, thank you. Sorry, I've been chatting on. You know, we, <laughs> do we wish it would go away? I don't know, that's up to people's, this, but you know what I mean? So we work collaboratively, you know, meaning the ZBA, you know, works with the developer at Abbeville to scale down. But if it was denied, he could have the right and say, you know what, remember I proposed I'll 350 units? I'll go all 40B. Uh, I'm, go I'm, go I'm going back to the original project I planned, 340 units, not the 230 that we negotiated. So you but, have a risk there. But what about these things like water and space. You know, you I mean know. that. I mean that's a whole different thing than putting in another access road for safety. Right. I mean, yeah, at what have, point does that? Have that with that, you know, we're we're already uh, addressing that proactively, anyways, because we need a we need a backup well and a redundancy well, which we're on Holbrook Street, which is looking very good. So we're to be we're, built. You mean? Yeah, it's already yeah, it's, it's going great through the permitting oh, process. I didn't know that. Yeah, Holbrook, off of Holbrook Street. You know, we, that's not going to give us extra capacity. We're still capacity constrained, um, but we need a we need redundancy too because you know we we can. We can handle all the development we currently have in town with our current wells, but that means they never get to go to bed. By bed, I mean take a break, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They're running all the time. And that, what that means is that's a stress on the system. Yes. That's just not the best way to run it. But we, you know, wells are time consuming, costly, and hard huh. to develop, but we're, you know, we're doing that proactively because you know, someday Southwood's gonna to come to some good project that we all agree on and like. Yeah, what's the story you know, over there right now? Archdiocese has put it in the hands of a, a real estate marketing firm that's been working with you know, some of the folks in town to talk about. They, for the first time in a long time, they came to us first, proactively said, what would Norfolk like to see? They kind of, you know, they had some they had some help by looking at the, the previous project of things that we did like, we didn't and like. that's you know, off the table, the, that's the right, New that, Jersey. That, yeah, that one's off. That's done and gone, his option ran out. So now, that, you know, now they're going back and looking at that, and that, you know, Again, I think it's a nice approach by instead of just coming to town saying, this is what we think Norfolk needs to want. What does Norfolk need to want? We need, we need over 55 housing, obviously. You know, we need you know, maybe acute care. We need, we need maybe some you know, apartments. There's a lot of needs we have, and they have proactively talked to us about that. But in my opinion, you know, I wish it was going faster, but we, you know, we haven't even got anything to look at or any, any interested buyers. I mean, dream scenario, a biotech company buys it you know, and uses it for what it's permitted for, and then we get a good, we get good commercial development. Yeah. Was that property ever cleaned up? Uh, no. Not if it, I, mean, not. I mean, it's been ca you know, it hasn't been fully cleaned. You know, I think what it was. How required, far down do they have to go? That needs you, to, you it, has to be it has to be tested. The same thing was like you know, a hydrologist they, yeah, like from the other and, night and take samples out and stuff like that. They just no, you know, the sites have been identified that they know of have been contaminated. So that's you know, it's not under any deep 
D, as far as I know, under any DEP conditions and stuff like that. So it's being it's mo it's monitored all the time. I mean, it should be monitored more often, just like what they're talking about over at Abbeville too. So. Right. Now, what is there anything else going on that you might want to be able to tell us about that people might not know about anything in the pipeline? But how many projects right now are are in the pipeline? Uh, are there six? Uh, Oh, permanent funding, like I know, you know, well, Boyd's is a work in progress. You have the enclave. Oh, it is still. Yeah, yeah, still. I mean, still, it's going, it's going great as far as I can tell. As far as like, it's, uh, and people have bought, have bought over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have you have the enclave, which is off, I think, off of uh, Village Green over there, the old Boy Scout property. Now, where is that exactly? People, uh, it's, I've heard people it's Village Green. It's hard to find because it's kind of landlocked. That's the <laughs> issue when they tried to develop, you know, tried to be a regular development in the past. I've never, I've never been on the Boy Scout land, but you can get it from Village Green. You can get it now, where, from. Where does Village Green off come Off Cleveland up? Street. Cleveland Street, that first right oh, off of off there. there, it goes in there, it goes uh -huh. towards the schools, and it's a nice, it's some beautiful, I guess, beautiful property out there. Um, you have 144 Seekonk is out there. Um, you have maybe 25 Main, but I don't know, you know, the you know the property there, you know, Bishop's going to you know, eventually do too. What's that, 25, now where's so, that? Rock, sorry, 25 Rockwood Road. You know, right at the, yeah, oh, that, yes. yeah, that's going to be, uh, you know. But nothing has been done no, up there. No, you know, again, a smart developer wants to see, you know, he doesn't want to flood the market, Somebody right? does live up there. Is that the owner of the property? Yes, yeah, Mr. Kelly, yeah, and his family was <laughs> Because yeah. I went up there, I, I didn't realize it was still a oh, house still that we were living yeah, in up still there. Property, and yeah. I drove up, I said, oh my, it looks like a little cottage in like a yeah, fairy tale. Yeah, it's big, it's and a big property. And I said, oh my goodness, and you know, of course, you know, took. Because, yeah, he's a very nice, yeah, the family, Caroline went to school, my his daughter went to school with Emily. So, um, um, still there. So, what, so you had said one of the really hardest things is is that the neighbors and all and you know. But you mentioned the dog. The dog, dog here. You know, every thankfully not very often, but every once in a while, you know, the. Um, uh, the animal control officer will bring dog hearings to us, meaning if they if they're violating leash laws or they bite someone, we have to address that and hear that. And the you know the ultimate worst would be if we we ordered a dog to be put down, which I haven't done in my tenure and never want never want to do. Again, I'm a dog lover. Jim's a dog lover, and I've had dogs in my whole life. So, but again, we have a we have a right. You know, we have an obligation to protect. You know, obviously the person with the dog, but just as importantly, anyone around that dog. So right. if it can't be controlled, right. you can't. You know, you can't. Assure the public that this dog will not harm someone because you can't you can't undo someone if someone gets hurt, right? And that's that, that makes it hard. Do you do you think 144 will go ahead? That's you know that's really in the hands. Of the, you know, well, I know that. Again, I mean, just personally, do you have I, any I, again, inkling? I, I, I don't have an inkling. I mean, you know, again, I think it's you know if the developer does his testing and you know, there's a lot of ledges there. I'm told I haven't walked the property. Um, it's you know. It's, it, it really, you know, really depends. Because what I thought was really interesting, I mean, I, he he has quite an attorney. You know, I mean, that guy must be he, charging him a ton of that young man the other night. And what what I didn't understand was he had those photos from those aerial photos from going way back, but didn't seem to it didn't seem to make a any impression. And I I, I, I assume they were all dated and everything. I couldn't see every one of them, but. It would seem to me that that would be pretty conclusive. Well, I think he, but I think his attorney, again, not knowing all the facts or any, how they had just what I saw, I watched that you meeting. Watched, yeah. Um, you know, the claim was that the, those aerial photos had been date previously back to, done. Yeah, 2007, 2010, because there was, there's been, you know, because it's a kind of a pretty piece of property, other than the legends, Hilly, it's beautiful. There's, as Miss uh, Sweeney pointed out, there's been other development in, tried there and, and not, not gone anywhere because whatever, you know, you know, whether it be ledge or whatever. So there's been some work done there. And those, those aerial photos, and there were some that were dated. Show Shows that you saw an open canopy there. It, yes. Has it been expanded, gotten bigger? I'm sure. I wouldn't, I, you know, I don't have, you know, I, I'm not, I didn't walk it like Mr. Bullock did and all those people in the neighbors right. took photos. So I didn't, you know, that's not the place I hike on. So I, I, I couldn't answer that. Anymore. And those cart paths, who, what were, who was carting? Were people well, carting? Well, I, I think they just get Do walked out. Do you happen down? to know what those they, are, were? No, when I think there's people, a lot of old cart paths in town, I mean, right? people I mean, cart yeah. vegetables or I think they use that word because or? we're an old town, right? They use that saying, but I think it's just, I think because it's trails. It, trails for, for, like for, they, for horses? They get well walked on. Yeah, I think people used to ride horses out there too and motorcycles. Make good trail, good or bad. You know, they they, they go through stuff pretty quickly. Like, over time, it becomes a trail, and more people find it, discover it, and start walking it. You know, it's all, you know, so you, you find a lot of little trails and uh, all around town. Any, you know, former found farming town like Norfolk, right? You're going to have a lot of cart paths in the day, or because they could have been used back then, right? The farmers could use that as a legitimate cart path back in his or her day. So, so what, what's what have you? We just have a, a few minutes, but but what have you enjoyed most about these six years? Uh, you know, meeting new people, helping people. You know, you know, watching projects. You know, helping projects begin and you know, seeing them through. Just, just the 
it's just a town growing, I and mean, I know it's growing. Not you know, everyone enjoys which way it's growing, but it's fun to see new people coming to town and new people get involved. But just just being part of it. I mean, I, you know, again, so it's like a big help. responsibility, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but we have but a great team. See, we have a team. See, yes, you know, that's people true. ask one time, like, what have you what have you accomplished on the board? Well, we've worked as a team. There's no one of us. It's you know, we all we all have an equal vote, and we're a team again with other boards too at the same time. So it's a, it's a collaborative. I think we've been good. But I think the boards themselves are take the most heat, wouldn't you say? I mean, yours is like a, a little bit of an overview. Oh, yeah, we have, When it comes down to these different decisions. Yeah, yeah, we get that, the, that and the, the town administrator probably takes the most heat, right? Uh, yeah, because we're the, technically we're the CEO of the town, right? We signed, doc, I mean, I signed a document the other day, it's a chief executive officer. I hate to think that that's me, but, you know, we're obviously we, we, we hire someone to govern, you know, to run the town on a day-to-day, -day, right? We're all volunteers. I mean, we're blessed that Mr. Lehan's retired, so he, he can really put in, he puts in probably 40 hours a week working for the selectmen for nothing. Now, for the is town. he going for another term? He'd be know? after me. It'd be up to him. He, he, you know, oh, he, he hasn't come up yet. Yeah, I'm yeah. up. Mr. Uh, Mr. Plumbo just got reelected this past May. It would be me, and then Mr. Lehan would be, you know, if he want, if he chooses to run again, which I hope he does, but it's up to him. Um, so there's a lot. Of, it is a lot of responsibility, but you know, just like in any kind of business, you hire good people. You hope you hire good people to to manage and help. And really, we're here as an extra set of eyes. But I like, it, like I said, we have advisory board, we have concerned citizens, and we have other boards. So I don't think, um, you know, I mean, yeah, you know. You know, I, I, you know, I don't think people should be concerned. You know, I'm not. And again, I think it's been a very good six years. I hope it, hope it makes nine. <laughs> you know, if, I, if I'm blessed, you know, people want to vote for me. No, you're going to go for the. Uh, there's going to be that thing with the um, candidates night. The can when oh, did, what yeah, night is it? It's what, Tuesday the 24th, April. Oh, for a little while, not for a little yeah, while. Yeah, oh, right towards the end. So the, yeah, because they always do it. I think about a oh, week before the election. That's right. That's so what we make first. Yeah, yeah. All so, right. so it's in people's minds. Oh, well, best well, of luck to you. Thanks, Emery. It's Thank wonderful. you for Thanks coming. For all of us. Oh, no, it's my fun. pleasure. Thank oh, you for coming yeah. on. Thank you very much. Uh, my guest was Scott Bugby. He is running for his third term on the Sele Board of Selectmen. He is an incumbent, obviously. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll have some more candidates on. Uh, I'm Anne-Marie Battistone, and you've been watching Norfolk Public Access State and Local. Mm -hmm.